Hey guys. All right, so the video down below is a little bit of footage from Beto's uh, recent campaign event in Newtown, Connecticut. And as we know, that's where the Sandy Hook shootings took place. And uh, one lady uh, stood up and began shouting at Beto, talking about how he was trying to capitalize on some of the... Um, the uh, remaining heartbreak from the uh, tragedy that occurred in Sandy Hook. And she um, said very correctly that, you know, Beto isn't talking about the right thing, you know, because Beto's whole gimmick is, he's kind of got two gimmicks. He wants not only for there to be open borders, but he wants to take down existing parts of the um, uh, barriers down there between the United States and Mexico, as well as uh, being the most outspoken in terms of wanting to uh, confiscate guns. He even said in an interview, this was about a year ago, where he was talking about how the Bill of Rights was irrelevant and how we should really reconsider what rights um, U.S. citizens should have. <clears throat> I mean, the guy is just a total nut job. Let's just you know, be uh, frank here. He has other gimmicks, of course. You know, he likes skateboarding. <laughs> he likes um, getting um, pictures of or videos of himself taken when he's at the dentist, when he's getting a haircut, when he's changing uh, a staffer's tire, and so it just there's a lot of cringe involved. And I talked about this before: how Beto is the cringiest uh, candidate amongst all the Democrats running for uh, 2020, and that's saying something because there's a shit ton of cringe out there. Um, there's this bone-breaking cringe every time we see these people get in front of the camera. And, you know, in a lot of ways I'm grateful because they're just um, securing a Trump 2020 victory for sure. Um, but we have to we have to kind of just uh, remind ourselves that, and it makes it a little less uh, uncomfortable to watch. But anyways, um, Beta was getting shouted down by this woman. Like I said, he was trying to capitalize on... Um, all of those, um, all the heartbreak that occurred from that tragedy, or that was um, <clears throat> left over from that tragedy. And she said very correctly that um, the real issue in terms of, of violence around the country is mental health. Now, the big pharma companies are going to dispute this because a lot of these mass shooters were um, uh, at some point in their life under the influence of SSRIs, which... Um, are basically, you know, street name for those uh, antidepressants. Now, I do not trust drugs whatsoever, and I'm so grateful to be um, over 30 days uh, clean and sober now. Uh, it doesn't matter. I don't. I don't trust any drugs. You know, alcohol, marijuana, cocaine, heroin, any of that stuff. It's not good for you. And this even goes for these prescription medications that people are getting. Unfortunately, some of my fellow addicts are still taking these to these days taking these to this day, and they're, they're a shell of their former self. I mean, they don't seem like like they're all there. And that goes for the people um, that have been uh, involved in these mass shootings. They have all been under the influence of some type of drug. And it's very unfortunate because a lot of these children, they get um, put on Adderall at a very, uh, very young age. I mean, I'm talking about as young as four. And um, to get personal here, I went to a preschool here in Santa Cruz, California, and the uh, teachers there recommended that my mom put me on Adderall. <laughs> uh, she was not having any of that. She's like, uh, no, go fuck yourselves, basically. And um, But the sad thing is, is that I saw my best friend. I saw the guy that I uh, play baseball with. I mean, they've been taking it their whole lives, and they, they are just... It's it's sad the way they've turned out. I mean, I don't think that they're happy, and I think that the way that they turned out, they probably they could they would probably change it if they had some control over it. But you know, once you get hooked on these drugs at an early age, there's no really getting off of them because your body becomes um, chemically dependent on them, and that's a very very bad position to be in. But anyways, going to the main story. Um, I really admire the courage of this woman to get up there and start shouting at Beto because the guy's a total pussy. I mean, he um, is advocating for people to give up their guns <clears throat> guns when um, he himself is surrounded by armed guards with AR-15s and, and handguns and whatnot. So um, it's very disheartening to see the hypocrisy coming from the left. But at the same time, like I've said this before, I've said it many times and I'll say it again, that we need to see these people from the far left talk the way they're talking because this is the only way that people are going to get woken up. 
there seems to be a bit of a confirmation bias amongst those on the left when they see a, a right winger talking about how crazy these people are on, on their side, on the left, they're going to say, oh, they're just some crazy right winger. They're just some dumbass, you know, Trump supporters, some cousin fucker, essentially. I mean, this is what they think in a lot of cases. Um, they won't say it, but they really do. They think that we're total bumpkins. Um, <clears throat> but if they start to see that behavior coming from the um, people on their own side, you know, like talking about taking guns and and talking about tearing down existing parts of the wall, and then just the orange man badge stick is going to get old after a long time. And even the white man badge stick, um, because a lot of these people on the left are white. They're going to get tired of being cucked in a lot of ways. They're going to get tired of being um, demeaned all the time, because they're going to say, well, there's nothing wrong with the color of my skin, which there is absolutely nothing wrong with the color of your skin. It doesn't matter what uh, race you come from. You know, you should be proud of your skin color, honestly. You should be proud of your um, of your race, of your ethnicity, of your heritage. And there's a lot of open definitions there, but just, you know, be proud of who you are. There's nothing wrong with you. Um, <clears throat> they're going to get tired of it. And the final and um, the third and final mantra, guns are bad and good, um, they're going to realize that uh, there's so many different um, uh, fallacies when it comes to gun control. I mean, you look at Chicago. It's not working out so great over there. They have um, a multitude of gun violent, uh, gun violent, violence related crimes. You know, um, there, there was this really just shocking video, and Styx has mentioned it before. He's uh, talked about it where um, this guy left his camera running for like several minutes, and he was in the middle of uh, Chicago, and it's just nothing but gunfire. It's insane. I mean, it, it literally is like a third world country. I mean, the first thing I thought was like this. You know, not that I've been there, but I'm thinking like, I'm, I'm imagining this is kind of what uh, Mogadishu is like with, with all the gunfire. I, I can't imagine um, anyone in the right mind looking at this and saying, well, gun control is really working out here because the reality is uh, with gun control, um, it doesn't work. It punishes the law-abiding uh, citizens and rewards the criminals as well as the black market because they begin to have a um, stranglehold on that. So if uh, legal gun sales go down, that's more of an opportunity for them to um, supply illegal uh, or guns illegally to people. Um, and there's a whole debate about that Second Amendment, of course. I don't think I think we should just get rid of all the gun laws altogether. You know, I don't think that criminals should own guns. Um, there should be laws in place to do that because at the same time, they're going to get them illegally. So it's like, well, we at least have to posture and say, well, yeah, of course you can't have a gun. You, you, um, you killed somebody at a very young age and I know you're out of prison, but you can't, we can't legally sell you one. They're going to get a gun if they want to get one. Um, <clears throat> and then they're also, and this is the one I keep bringing up with, um, gun control. It's like with the minorities and according to the left's logic, like if the minorities are forced to give up their guns, then can you really depend on the police to come protect them in a um, instance uh, instant of uh, violent crime against them? You know, whether it's a armed robbery at their house, a burglary, a mugging on the street. I mean, according to you guys, like the cops are total racist. They're not going to protect the brown people and the black people. So um, there's definitely a lot of fallacies there. And I just want to say this in closing. You know, I had somebody uh, say that, oh, only guns, or rather only cowards carry guns. Only, you know, cowards carry guns. So I'm thinking about my own uh, family. My, my great aunt who lives up in Oregon, she's lived there for quite some time, but she um, carries a handgun everywhere she goes with her. And I'm thinking, are you really calling my great aunt a coward for wanting to defend herself? I mean, she lives alone. Um, do, you, do you think that uh, that's going to go over well? I mean, do you even have the balls to like say that to her? Honestly, I mean, you, you sound completely insane. And you even had this idiot, uh, Samantha B, uh, who's you know a Daily Show alumni, but she came out many years ago and said, "Oh, you know, guns are basically penis replacements. You know, they're just a bunch of white men with small penises that want to you know show off their phallic shaped objects." It's like. No, that has nothing to do with it. I mean, maybe in some cases, I I'm, I'm, can't rule anything out, but for the majority of them, it's like, that is absolutely incorrect. Like, you really are going to call somebody, uh, like, a, you're going to call a man a dickless, um, you're going to call a man dickless for wanting to defend his family in case something happens, in case somebody breaks into their house. I mean, um, Samantha, I hate to break it to you, but your armed guards around you, they all got guns. <laughs> 
Um, are you going to call them dickless? Huh? I don't think so. And also, I want to say, like, I really admire the courage of this woman to go up there and essentially, you know, <laughs> tell Beto to bring it on because, you know, she, and, you know, she, he's not going to debate her. You know, what do you... What are you thinking? You know, I, I admire the courage, but you have to look at it this way. Beto is such a pussy that uh, he is going to have these little campaign events, which is a, another uh, term for low energy rally or low energy slash attendance rally. Um, <clears throat> and he's going to handpick everybody that's in the crowd. And I can tell you right now that he's going to make damn sure that no woman like this is going to be, or no man like this, no person is going to be put in the audience of any of these um, future events. I can tell you that now. Um, so, you know, like, you know, good on you for asking him to debate you, but come on, he's not going to do that. Are you kidding me? <laughs> he's a total pussy. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. God bless. I'll see you later.